Hi, my name is Kevin Toe, and in this presentation, I will be explaining the life cycle of the parasite trematode. So what are trematodes? A trematode is a parasitic flatworm, also known as flukes. They have a very complex life cycle, where in order for them to complete their life cycle, they must infect more than one host. They can't skip any of these stages, or else they just won't be able to reproduce sexually. So without further ado, let's examine the life cycle. So the life cycle shows the host of the infect. This is just a truncated um, sketch of the different stages of the trematode life cycle. For example, here we can see that the bird is the definitive host, which just means that where sexual reproduction takes place. We also have two other hosts in the life cycle. The first intermediate host, which is a snail, and the second intermediate host is a variety of other organisms, depending on the species or trematodes of interest. So the life cycles also shows the parasitic stages that the parasite has to go through, as well as how these stages are transmitted from one host to another. So let's talk about trematode life cycles in much more detail. Let's start with when a snail becomes infected. So one larva will hatch out of an egg and infect a snail. This is very bad news for the snail. For from this moment on, the snail will become castrated, which means that they will never again make any more snail babies. Instead, all the tissue that were normally healthy snail gonad will be turned into the parasite tissue. For example, looking at this photograph here, we can see that this is what the snail looks like when you remove its shell. On the top, we have a healthy snail um, tissue, and the green tissue you see is a healthy gonad. And on the bottom, you can see that the green tissue has been replaced by white parasitic tissue. In fact, you can see little tiny white sacs that are spilling out of the snail, where each one of these sacs is actually making more parasite stages. And these stages will then leave the snail swimming out into the water called sicaria. And essentially, these snails no longer function as snails in their own ecosystem because they can't be produced. They're simply parasites disguised as snails. Also, these snails are getting eaten by predators, meaning that parasitic tissue is an important component of the predator's diet. So Sakari is basically the next stage of the Trimatov life cycle. And what it does is that it insists within on a second intermediate host to form metasacariae, which we see here. So metasacariae would essentially insist on the other types of variety or organisms that we talked about in the beginning summary, where you can have um, insisting on fish brain, crabs, and fish gills, and essentially that is where they're trying to um, get the definitive host, which is the bird, to um, eat these smaller animals like fish and crabs so that they can end up in the definitive host where they can be produced sexually because that's where um, they can be produced more of their own kind. And in life, that is essentially what the goal of every organism is to reproduce and to form offspring. So in fact, speaking of wing to be eaten, these parasites can do many things to increase the likelihood of ending up in the right host, such as the bird. And this is called parasite-induced trophic transmission. This basically means that the parasite is doing something, changing something in the host, the intermediate host to be exact, to make it more likely for the parasite to be transmitted to the definitive host by making the intermediate host easier to be preyed on by the definitive host. So for example, Euphacloreus californiensis is a common type of trematode in Carpentaria. And this is the one that insists on the brain of killifish, um, which is the fish species we see here. And when a fish has this parasite in its brain, the parasite would take full control of the fish. And, and instead of having the fish swimming kind of low in the water where it's safe, it makes the fish swim closer to the surface of the water, flashing its white belly to send a morse code to the bird saying, eat me, I'm easy prey. In fact, birds are 30 more times likely to eat a fish that's infected than one that is uninfected. And essentially, in the end, what happens is that the fish is 
it's eaten by the definitive host, which is the bird, and it reproduces, um, the parasite reproduces inside the definitive host, and the cycle essentially starts over again. Thank you for listening to this presentation.